And here's a second example of a lens combination. Actually, we're using the very same lenses as we used in combination one. The only difference here is that instead of placing the object far away from the first lens, meaning beyond the focal point of the first lens, we're now going to place the object inside the focal point of the first lens. If we remember right, that means that the first image will be a virtual image, and we'll see how that really plays out in this combination. But let's assume we didn't know that yet. We're going to then draw the ray diagram for the first lens, and so uh, we draw the first rays parallel to the uh, normal. We hit the lens, then it converges uh, down to the focal point of the first lens, continues on like this. So this is ray number one. Ray number two is uh, through the focal point, except we're already past the focal point, so we draw a dashed line from the focal point to the tip of the object, then we continue on in the same direction until we hit the lens, then the lens will cause the ray to be diverge, and then continues on parallel to the normal, and that would be ray number two. And you can see that ray number one and ray number two do not converge to the uh, same point, meaning it, they do not form a real image. But the observer, looking back, sees ray number one coming from this direction, sees ray number two coming from this direction, says, oh, I know where those came from, and we'll continue with the, um, imagining that the rays came from here, and this ray came from here, and say, aha, there it is, that's where the rays must be coming from, so the brain forms an image at that location, there we go, and let's call that image one. And you can see since the image formed in front of the lens, it's not a real image, it's a virtual image. So let's use our equations to find the location and the uh, size and so forth of the first image. So we say that S1 prime is equal to S1 F1 over S1 minus F1. And plug in the numbers that we have here, S1 was 15 centimeters, F1 was 30 centimeters, so divided by 15 minus 30, which is equal to 450, divided by minus 15, which is equal to a minus 30 centimeters. Now, I didn't quite draw this the way I needed to. It looks like my line here is not quite straight. <laughs> uh, probably a better thing would have been to have the line come like this, and it looks like the image really would form somewhere in this neighborhood. So let's just kind of cut this one out. There's our image one, it's a little bit more realistic, and it matches the numbers that we got. It turned out image one formed right where the focal point of lens one is. All right, as far as the uh, type of image that we have, since the image distance is negative, that indicates, of course, that this is a virtual image. So I1 is virtual, not real. And the magnification, M1 is equal to minus S1 prime over S1, which is a minus S1, that's a minus times a minus 30, divided by the object distance, which is 15, which gives me two. All right, that means that the image is twice the size of the object, and since it's a positive number, that means it's also in the same direction as the object, and so therefore it is upright. So the image is upright. Let me put that down right here. Okay, now we're ready to find the image caused by the second, uh, I mean, by the second lens. And of course, the image of the first lens now becomes the object of the second lens. So we say image one now equals object two. And so the distance from that object, quote object, which is image one, to the lens here now becomes our new object distance. So this would be S2, and S2 would be this distance right here, which is 30 centimeters, plus the 10 centimeters here, so that would be 30 plus 10, or 40 centimeters. And it's a plus 40 centimeters because the object, quote object, is in front of the lens too, so therefore that gives you a positive object distance. All right, now going ahead and using the same equation, except we use subscripts 2 now, so we have S2 prime equals S2 F2 divided by S2 minus F2, and so that's equal to S2 is now 40. F2, the focal length of the second lens was 20 centimeters, divided by 40 minus 20, so this is equal to 800 over 20, which is equal to a positive 40 centimeters, which means that the second image forms 40 centimeters behind uh, yeah, behind the second lens, so 40 centimeters, that would be about here. Now the question is, is the image upright or upside down? We don't know that yet. We'll have to find out first by taking the second, second magnification equation, so M2 is equal to minus S2 prime 
over S2. So that's a minus. S2 prime was a 40 centimeter, so minus 40 divided by S2. S2 was 40 centimeters, I believe, right? Right there, 40 centimeters. And so this is equal to minus 1. All right, that means the size of the second image is equal to the size of the first image, exactly the same. And the fact that it's negative here means that it's upside down relative to the first image, which is the second object, so it's inverted at this location. So here we go, so that would be image 2, and it's upside down. And uh, is it a real image? It certainly is, because it's a positive image distance, so it's, it's a real image. So I2 is real, and it has the same size as the first image, and it's upside down relative to the first image, so it's upside down or inverted. There we go. That is how you find the first and the second image of um, a double lens system like that when you put the object inside the focal length of the first image. Now we have one more thing to do. What is the size of the image? the final image relative to the original object. To do that, we simply have to multiply the two m's, m1 times m2. m1 we found to be equal to 2, and m2 was equal to a negative 1, so that's equal to negative 2, which means the final image, the second image, it's twice the size of the original object, and since it's negative, it is inverted relative to the original object. And that's the problem.